More charter schools are on the way. State education officials say they will consider 32 applications now to open new charter schools. And the Star Ledger is reporting most of these applicants want to open up in Patterson, Jersey City, and Newark. By the way, Newark is about to get something new and different this coming year a school for boys. And joining us now, the founding director of Eagle Academy, David Banks. Mr. Banks, welcome. Thank you. First of all, this is not a charter school, is it? No, it's not. This is a traditional district uh, partnership school, and so uh, we're very happy about that as well. And this is not the first time you've done this, is it? No. In New York City, uh, we created the first all-boys public high school in New York in almost 30 years, uh, back in 2004, the Eagle Academy for Young Men. And since that time, it's been such a great success that uh, Mayor Bloomberg asked us to replicate. So we went from our founding school in the Bronx to our second school in Brooklyn. We opened a third school two years ago in Southeast Queens, and we're thrilled to be coming to uh, Newark, New Jersey to open our fourth school this coming fall. How did you get to Newark? Was it something that you saw and spotted, or did they invite you in? I think it's a combination of both. I think Newark right now is, is in a great place of innovation and looking for great models. And I think also that what we bring to the table is a tremendous need in the city of Newark. Got lots of great new models that are coming in, but I don't think that there's any model that's quite like ours that really caters to the needs of young men. We figured out the recipe of how you engage young men in the schools. What is that recipe, sir? Well, it's, it's a very involved one, but uh, we figured out you've got to hire just the right teachers who understand, you know, the energy that boys have. We start at the sixth grade, and we take them all the way through to 12th grade. Um, there are rituals and ceremonies attendant to the work that we do. Um, but I think one of the most important things is that we find adult male mentors to help these young men. One of, one of, the, one of the young men from Eagle Academy said that a, uh, a young man without a mentor is like an explorer without a map. How do you find those teachers? Uh, great teachers and great mentors. Uh, really, I think the reputation of the school now kind of speaks for itself. So many of those great teachers find they us. They find you. Yeah, 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 because the reputation has been so strong and so many young men are looking to come to our school. Uh, are they only male teachers? No, no, it runs the whole gamut. We look for the best teachers that we can possibly find. In fact, some of the best teachers that we have are our female teachers. Uh, don't know what we would do without them. What uh, distinguishes, what's the, what's the one distinguishing characteristic you would say that they have? over some of their colleagues elsewhere. The, the teachers? Yes. Oh, they're just, they're maniacs. I mean, yeah. there's just a maniacal, driven, passion, passion yeah. work ethic, and a love and respect, not only for the young men, but a love and respect for the community. The curriculum really is, is, is similar to what they would experience in, in middle school or high school or not? I mean, they, they have to take all the standard courses that kids have to take in middle schools and, and high schools, you know, anywhere that they go. Um, the but teaching we, methods are different or the same? I think some of the teaching methods are, are, are different in, uh, in, in how we engage the young men. And so some of the books, book choices that we make, you know, with our young men are books that, you know, I think the young men find to be much more engaging and things that they want to read and want to be engaged in. How are the books different? Uh, well, you know, you, you're, you're offered an opportunity of different choices when you're, when you're putting together a curriculum. Mm -hmm. And so books that are, um, you know, much more action-oriented uh, and, and books that I think that really speak to experiences that boys can really relate to. Um, you know, so boys are not so much drawn to the, to the standard novels. They find them to be very boring. And so uh, we try to find the kind of books that, uh, that young men find to be exciting and will ultimately want them to read. Different ways to get them to the same level of success, uh, different methodologies. What do you demand of them? This, they, they go to school, they've got to wear a uniform, is that correct? Absolutely, yeah. They wear shirts and ties each and every day. Um, there's nothing worse than when you're trying to set up a young man and have him go for an, inter an interview or a job, and he's never even learned how to tie a tie. So you've eliminated the distractions of, of having girls in the classes, and you've eliminated the possible distraction of, of fashion or, or style. You, you really want them concentrating on that teacher, that book, that lesson? Absolutely. And so that, that when they are focused and they don't have to worry about dress code or they don't have to worry about the girls. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the level of brilliance and potential that these young men have. They just need the rights around them. Let me play devil's advocate here. There are those who say we spent so many years in this country trying to bring different people together, different races, different ethnicities, different... You know, why would splitting people up again uh, on a gender basis sure. not kind of 
You say that you could say, well, they're not around girls, they're not around young women. How would they know how to act with young women? Now? Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, Newark is also announcing that they will be bringing an all-girls public school to Newark uh, next fall, mm -hmm. and so they will be our sister school, mm -hmm. and we will be partnering with those young ladies and doing all kinds of social activities and different things with them throughout the years. Um, but when you need these young men to stay focused in the classroom, we just think that it's very important not to have the distractions. Mm -hmm. But I think most importantly, what's really, you know, everybody in your audience really needs to know, it's a choice. Nobody should be mandated to go to a single gender school. All we simply said is that people of means in this country mm -hmm. maintain all of their options, and we want the folk in Newark to be able to have an option of whether they want to send their child to a single gender school. Is it selective? Do they have to apply? Do they have to be accepted into the program? It's, it's a lottery that will be run by the, uh, the Newark Public Schools uh, Superintendent's Office. And so we don't hand select the students. Um, there's no test that you have to take. Uh, you merely have to apply. But I can tell you in New York, at our school in the Bronx, last year we had over 5,000 applications for 100 seats. And so how, many it's a high seats demand. how many seats will you have in Newark? In Newark will probably be about 85 seats in the sixth grade beginning um, beginning this fall, and in fact beginning this summer, because one of the most important aspects of the school is we have a four-week summer bridge program. To get them ready. Get them ready for, for the fall. Mr. Banks, we have to leave it there. We will revisit this subject in this school with you, sir. Thank you for coming in. Good luck to you. Thank you so much.